नमस्कार वी आर बैक विद द न्यू चैप्टर और एडिशन ऑफ करियर कॉर्नर इन एवरी एपिसोड ऑफ करियर कॉर्नर यू मीट वन स्टॉल आउट ऑफ वन पर्टिकुलर फील्ड अ डोमेन एंड द एक्सपर्ट स्पीक्स अबाउट हीज और हर डोमेन हाउ एज ही और शी इवॉल्व इन दैट वॉट आर द वेरियस आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर फील्ड हाउ इज द सोसाइटी बेनिफिटेड बाई दैट एंड हाउ the education of that particular domain evolving over time and what are the futuristic outlooks of that particular domain in, in specifically we bring in experts from various departments schools and disciplines of adamus university the university known to be the best private university in eastern and northeastern india thanks to ranking by various media organizations like abp anando India ahead Z news and many more today in this episode we talk about physics physics a very well known domain or aspect or specialization within natural sciences yes at the higher level of living existence and knowledge there is no differentiation between one discipline of science and the other natural sciences together present the reality of the world the natural reality of civilization or of the world but then for understanding sake we focus on various aspects physics on the physical natural sciences physical environment chemistry on chemical natural sciences life sciences or biology focusing on life and its existence and so on and so forth because each of these have further specializations new specializations within them physics is a discipline of learning physics as a discipline of research have evolved from the times of newton when gravitation was discovered by newton observing the fall of an apple and we know that story from newton to einstein when he talked talked about e is equal to mc square and defined the na- the characteristics of energy to the current nobel prize winning i mean recent nobel prize winners in physics say for example andrigain or nobel salev men many others this entire gamut of subject of physics have evolved over time today we'll know about how it has evolved how it has made an impact on human life on society how it is a specialized domain of learning how at a higher level research of physics is also bringing in futuristic trends and outlooks with us today professor momita de the head of the department of physics in adamus university school of basics and basic and applied sciences thank you madam for your presence today welcome to the show thank you very much sir madam momita you can begin by speaking about your personal journey as a physicist how have what have you studied how have you done your research what were your themes where did you do all that one yes. what were your revelations in life or ex- uh, what should i say your uh, you know sort of realizations in life as a physicist why did you select physics as your specialization yes, all these if you could speak at uh, length yes sir thank you very much sir for your uh, kind introduction uh, hello everyone so uh, from the very beginning of my school life say from class 8 i was initially very much inclined towards uh, studying those physical science uh, discipline that we had and uh, it always intrigues me it always uh, makes me curious that how things work how uh, how am i being able to uh, sit in this chair how if i drop this pen it falls on the table so it is really it was a very intriguing thing and then when i started uh, in uh, my class 11 12 uh, then also i find physics very much interesting so i had decided by then that i will become a physicist and then i started my graduation uh, from calcutta university post graduation from university of calcutta and then uh, i did my post doctoral post msc associateship and um, doctoral uh, research from shah institute of nuclear physics kolkata actually uh, my specialization was uh, theoretical physics it is uh, more precisely it is uh, theoretical condensed matter physics in my research area uh, we all know about nanotechnology people today talk about uh, nanotechnology a lot and in my research area i had focused on spintronics that uh, how an a completely neglected f- degree of freedom of electrons uh, which is called the spin 
can brought about a lot of changes in electronics and, and uh, later I'll talk about it in details. So that was my research domain. I had published uh, more than uh, 20 articles in international SCI journals and uh, still now the journey is uh, on. And then I had joined here as a assistant professor and I'm now I'm leading this department of physics. Great. Is this your first academic job? Yes, sir. Okay. Just after being um, completed my PhD. PhD. Yeah. Spintronics, that's very interesting. Uh, something a specialized domain within physics. Yes. So if you could talk about the various specialized domains of physics. So what could be the various, uh, you know, uh, someone who has studied MSc in physics mm. goes into some specialized domain for further work, further research. Yes. If you could speak on what these domains are. Yes, sir. there are very um, a lot of, actually physics is a very fundamental subject and from physics uh, you can go to different disciplines like uh, from different areas of foundational subjects, from different areas of application of physics. Uh, like um, in our MSc programs, we also have that uh, kind of specialization. Like first is uh, high energy physics. We all know about that. People are quite romantic about this astrophysics and cosmology thing, and they are interested about the things, how astronomical things are working outside this space. Right. And then we have uh, condensed matter physics, uh, which was initially named as uh, solid state physics, and then after inclusion of liquid crystals and everything, now we can, um, I mean, call this discipline as uh, condensed matter physics. Uh, then we have. Uh, specializations like uh, biomedical instrumentation and medical physics which I think is the need of the art. It is a very important discipline and physics has a great impact on medical science mm. and then there are specializations like applied electronics, non-linear dynamics which has a great impact on data science and weather forecasting, weather prediction models. Then there are specializations like uh, uh, fiber optics and uh, uh, laser. So there are various multiple disciplines from where which a student can pursue and uh, take on his dream. Great. So, uh, for those who thought that physics itself is a specialization at school level, you think so, I yeah. understand that. Physics, chemistry, biology, you know, that way we think. But when you enter into physics, you understand there are 10, 12 different domains within that. And you finally choose one after having, that's the beauty of learning sciences. You st start your journey in your school as just a sciences, a paper, a module, a subject called sciences. And from there, you move to physics, chemistry, maths. And from after BSc, and when you come into MSc, you move into further specialization. At PhD level, you might even, even get into niche, further niche areas. So that's how a pyramid structure of education is built up. That's the right way of learning anything, not just sciences, not just natural sciences, but whether it's social sciences, communication sciences, or whatever, management sciences. It's good to learn from a broad base to a narrow apex. And the apex specializes on a niche area. Professor Momita, thank you for that introduction to the subject and its various uh, specialization areas. I understand physics has been there for ages. And from Newton to Einstein to Andergaine and others, there, it has been there. So how is it relevant even today? And why do we, we call, I understand when students study their, start their journey, they call it physics there. It is supposed to be called with a broad word called physics. But how is it relevant even today's context in education and in society, if you could speak on that? Uh, yes, a very pertinent question. Uh, so, uh, yes, physics is not a very new name. We all have heard about it. And uh, whenever I, it's not a new name like Spintronics, as I said, or uh, say Geoinformatics or Bioinformatics. This is, uh, this is there for centuries. And whenever I utter this name, uh, physics, as Sir said, uh, multiple names pop up in our mind. And it doesn't, you, you don't have to be a physicist to know those names. Like uh, in 16th century, Galileo Galilei. In 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton. In 18th century, there were um, Michael Faraday, Ohms, to, just to name a few. In 19th century, there were um, Clark Maxwell, um, Nikolai Tesla, and then uh, one of the brightest uh, time in the history of physics, where, where uh, who were not there then? From Einstein, Albert Einstein, to Richard Feynman, from Paul Dirac, to Erwin Schrodinger, uh, from Minkowski, to until very recently, Sir Stephen Hawking. And uh, so, uh, even uh, if we uh, think about our own country, we had uh, stalwarts like uh, Sir Jagadish Chandra Bosch, uh, Shotan Ranat Bosch, Meghnath Shah, C. V. Raman, uh, S. Chandra Shekhar, Homi Jahangir Baba. So, all these people, they have inspired us, they have amazed us through their out of the box thinking, through their uh, study, through their discovery. So uh, now uh, let me come back to you, sir, to your question. So, after all these ages, all the centuries, uh, and all these discoveries, 
why physics is still relevant why uh, shall we study this subject or not uh, why it is so indispensable so the my answer is that physics is the study of nature and to be more precise physics is the study of matter and energy and their interaction so what are you seeing around us it is a matter the light I am seeing, it's an energy. The sound I am hearing, it's an energy. The heat I am feeling, it's an energy. So it is either matter or energy. So if we need to understand the everyday natural phenomena around us, we must understand physics. And um, and physics has a lot of a lot of um, uh, I mean effect impact on uh, on the progress of society. And I'll talk about it later. But uh, for the time being, let me just say that uh, physics is the major driving force behind the development of any technology. Oh, and great. those technology has reshaped our lives. I mean, it is there in everywhere, like uh, functioning of a small scale miniaturized nanoscale device to understanding of a large astronomical object. From application of nonlinear dynamics uh, to weather prediction model to um, uh, stock market prediction by using data science and statistical ideas, by um, from using okay data science and statistical also ideas can be a part of physics as well. Yes, oh, yes, okay, of course. Great. That's interesting. Statistical mechanics is an integral part of physics, and That's where interesting, uh, interesting. Yes. So there are three types of matter, and there are various forms of energy. So these three types of matter and the various forms of energy, their interaction yes. is the focus area of natural sciences and how these interactions lead to various technology when applied. Yes. yes, please continue. This application part is very interesting. Continue. Uh, how it is if, uh, affecting the society or impacting on society? Yes, sir. Uh, it is uh, there. I mean, uh, uh, to uh, talk about that how physics has reshaped our lives. So let me ask you, sir, one question that can you imagine a day of your life without your cell phone? No, not Probably at all. Not. <laughs> not at all. Uh, uh, can you imagine a day without your laptop or desktop or internet not connection? Not anymore I mean, in these days in the feel? digital world, not anymore. Yes, sure. So you will feel disconnected. You will feel that something is less, something isn't there. You will, uh, we all feel that. In fact, forget about smartphones. Few days back, we had arm fun and um, uh, probably one of the greatest storm our country our state has ever seen and due to the post effect of um, i mean after effect of amfan um, in many areas there were two three four days even there were power cut and people went mad people uh, were in trouble so why is it so because today we have made our lifestyle in such a way where electricity is an integral part we can't even think of a uh, of spending a single day without electricity so electricity this is one of the greatest invention by physics for mankind i mean uh, look at this uh, just by creating a voltage reference through something as simple as a battery we can make electrons flow and this is the entire basis of electricity and uh, today we have come to such a point that we cannot even uh, think about spending a day without electricity we can we can't really do so somehow uh, sometimes i feel that we have taken physics for granted we have forgot to acknowledge the contribution of this subject uh, which has made so much contribution uh, to value addition of our life i mean uh, let me cite another example transistor it was uh, discovered by shockley and his team in bell lab in 1947 probably and today transistors are the basic structural unit of a computer chip and depending on the input voltage condition, this transistor can act as a switch. I mean, for some input voltage, it will be an off state. It will be in an off state. For some input input voltage, it will be in an on state. And through the, in any computer, there are billions of tiny transistors through which information can be stored and manipulated. So uh, there are another example, say airplanes. So flights can uh, be possible to fly. I mean, it is possible for airplanes to fly because of the application of Bernoulli's theorem of fluid dynamics so which is again physics so I can go on and on during this entire time but uh, this is all the these are all the examples that uh, were done many years ago now if you ask me what physics is doing right now what contribution it is making towards our life right now so now I have a question uh, I have an answer and so the first point that I am um, actually there are many ways in which I can uh, describe the contribution of physics towards the value addition of our society. The first point that I want to mention here is that the application of physics in medical sciences. Very nice. Yeah. And uh, so uh, you will be pleased to know that the first thing that comes uh, to my mind here is that cancer diagnosis and prediction. We all know that uh, cancer, uh, the mortality rate of cancer is probably the highest in any country. 
uh, rather than any other diseases. So, uh, modern physics research, so what is cancer? First, let me tell that cancer is a group of disease caused by uncontrollable cell division. Mm -hmm. And for this uncontrollable cell division, sometimes a tumor is produced yeah. and it can spread and uh, destroy the surrounding tissues. Right. But uh, modern physics research has created a path or as an, an improvement towards the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. So first, let me focus on the diagnosis part. So when I'm saying diagnosis, the first thing that comes to my mind it is computer tomography scanning by using X-ray, again physics. Computer tomography scanning is popularly known as CT scan and it is used in um, uh, very regularly, not right. only for cancer detection. Right. Today, Several doctors places. prescribe it for any uh, diagnosis, yes. for ma mainly for tumor detection. Yeah. Then there is another thing which is a pure application of physics which is the PET scan. What is PET scan? PET scan is positron emission tomography scanning. Uh, what ha and it particularly relies on a particular type of radioactive decay where positrons, the antiparticle of electron is emitted from a su uh, substance. And uh, you know sir, what happens here is that a radioactive substance is attached uh, with a bioactive material and that then it is injected into the body of a patient. And because of that bioactive material, um, the it gets the radioactive isotope gets accumulated in the body of the patient and then the positrons get emitted right. and this positron as it is an antiparticle of electron it then gets annihilated with the surrounding electrons right. and due to this process we uh, physicists call it pair annihilation okay. and as sir um, mentioned the thing e is equal to mc square we all know this relation because of this relation it is an application of this this pair uh, as mass is being destroyed so some energy is created mm -hmm. and this energy is emitted from the patient's body in the form of light which then gets detected by the imaging camera and is used to construct 3d images of the infected area okay. so it is a pure application of physics right then uh, there is MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, which also relies on a very basic fact of physics that in presence of external magnetic field, all the magnetic atoms can realign itself. So uh, there so are what, lots. What we thought as uh, medical science concepts yes. are actually at the base physical ideas Definitely. coming from physics. And uh, that's, that's a great application of physics very in the context of healthcare. Continue, ma'am. What uh, other yeah. societal impact do you find? Yes, uh, in fact, um, in um, uh, as far as diagnosis, uh, I have talked about diagnosis. Now, as far as uh, treatment is concerned, you know, apart from surgery, one of the greatest uh, uh, treatment for cancer patients is radiotherapy, right. which is again a research outcome of curiosity-based particle physics research. Right. I mean, uh, what happens here is that a high-energy radiation, high-energy particle beam is uh, deposited on the cancerous cells and if the dose is right then it can rupture the right. DNA right. in the cell nuclei. Okay. So this is again an application of physics right. and now uh, particularly now people are working towards another field which is the low energy terahertz radiation and people are using this radiation for early stage detection of skin cancer and particularly breast cancer because this terahertz radiation is nothing but light where wavelengths lie between microwave and um, infrared domain. Right. And this terahertz re um, radiation, they have the ability to penetrate through several millimeters of a body where water content is low. Several, uh, for example, say fatty tissues. And therefore, it is used, it can be used uh, to um, uh, detect very early stage cancer, particularly skin cancer and breast cancer. And you know, sir, this um, terahertz radiation is quite safer compared to the X-ray radiation because it's a non-ionizing radiation. It is less invasive, less painful. So now you can understand the impact of physics that we have on medical science. Medical science, yes. You yes. have talked about the telecom industry earlier, yeah. and uh, uh, now uh, telecommunication field as earlier. Yes, there are other applications, other as, applications well. as well. Uh, yeah, uh, let me cite one by one. Another uh, point that I want to mention is space industry. Right, space. Space yes. industry and um, around the world, the space industry has generated based on physics research. I mean, uh, it is everything is uh, related to physics there, starting from uh, how to uh, design the satellite, satellite, then how to calculate the trajectory in which the uh, rocket are, uh, are to be launched, then, um, uh, then what are the methods that need to be followed to keep the satellite on track and uh, uh, in right direction, so everywhere is physics. 
and now this satellite industry we all know that it has revolutionized telecommunication broadcasting right. uh, defense of many countries mm -hmm. and network facility so overall this impact has increased the productivity of people around the world very so good. it is another um, very impactful A very uh, simple lucid uh, uh, you know well documented well illustrated example exemplification of the various applications of physics in daily life in societal uh, use in industry use uh, thank you very much for that that's a quite an erudite talk you have used and people use normally particle physics nuclear physics high energy physics now could you uh, in a couple of lines each define each of these areas and one or two more if there are uh, and say how are they you know newer areas of research what are the futuristic area, uh, research domains in that so particle physics nuclear physics high energy physics what other uh, yes, domains yes, of I'm, physics I'm are there? I'm talking about so, all the specializations. Yes, so if you could uh, speak about one or two, how each one is distinctive or unique yes, in their uh, own way. Each one is very much distinctive as uh, as you will uh, study after master degree that you will say nuclear physics is mostly concerned about the properties of nuclear. High energy physics means which deals with the particle uh, radiation where the high energy, uh, high energy means where the energy of that particle uh, goes to from uh, giga electron volt to tera electron volts. Mm -hmm. Then there is condensed matter physics where mostly people deal with the properties of electrons or uh, other subatomic particles in a dense state where the number of particles are very high that is in solid state uh, we know that and then uh, very recently liquid crystals are added and we all know about LCD liquid crystal LCD means liquid crystal display yeah. and the name itself is very intriguing I mean what is liquid crystal this is a particular kind of material that can flow like a fluid that is why liquid but the molecules can orient themselves in a crystal like pattern and that is why the name came liquid crystal and uh, we all know the application of liquid crystal I mean in our mobile phone there is liquid crystal right, display right. in our uh, computer monitors display video gaming so what happens here is that uh, let me just uh, say a few minutes uh, a thin film of liquid crystal is produced between two glass plates right. and then the glass plates are coated with transparent electrodes and, uh, and those transparent electrodes are then connected with external battery sources. Now, depending on the input voltage, the optical properties of this thin film of uh, liquid crystal can change. And this has well impact, uh, very much uh, impact on uh, our monitors, uh, smartphones, we all know that LCD. Okay. Similarly, another uh, thing is uh, quantum computation. We have uh, even 20 years back, we didn't heard about even the name quantum computation. So what is quantum computation? Quantum computation, uh, we know, I have already talked about bits, where transistors are used as bits. In quantum computation, scientists are using quantum bits or qubits. And it is uh, uh, dependent, uh, depending on three basic properties of a quantum mechanical system, like number one, um, they can be, uh, there can be linear superposition of the states, which is not classically possible. Uh, number two, uh, there can be quantum possibility of quantum mechanical in interference. And the number three is that even though two states are spatially separated, they can be entangled with each other. Now, based on these three properties, quantum computation is uh, designed. And uh, you will be happy to know, sir, that uh, very recently, in November 2019, Google has uh, claimed to have achieved quantum supremacy just by performing a series of operations, which just took uh, a few seconds, which they claimed would have taken around 10,000 years by the best supercomputer of the world. Okay. So you can imagine the kind of revolution, the kind Happening, of, yes, yes the Computing, kind of yes. impact it has, the potential it has. And uh, big shot companies like Google, IBM, they are spending billions of dollars on it. So, um, and it will change the face of quantum cryptography. So this is another specialization. So and quantum physics itself has various special yes, quant specializations. Qu quantum physics, uh, no, sir, I mean, right now quantum physics is not a specialization. It is, uh, money, I mean, the uh, we have uh, advanced so far that quantum physics has become a very general formalism general format right And now. within that, many yeah, things are coming that, out. Uh, from after that. learning quantum physics, you can go to many specializations. I mean, uh, condensed matter physics is an application of quantum right. physics. Nanotechnology is there. Spintronics is there. Right. Quantum computation is there. One thing that I want to mention, another point is, optical fiber technology right. optical fibers are nothing but glass threads right. where the core and cladding has the approximate dimension of a human hair 
and it can transmit light up to a very long distance without dissipation right. and now this optical fibers are used um, uh, have brought a tremendous revolution in the field of telecommunication right. in the field of medicine in the field of sensor um, uh, making processes I mean uh, some regions in mines and oil wells where a human being can't go there but optical fiber based sensors can measure lots of uh, can take lot of information from there uh, there are endoscopy we know about endoscopy, yes, endoscopy yeah, yeah. In, in endoscopy optical fiber doctors yeah. use optical fibers to see the inside of a patient's body, patient's body yeah. so uh, we can imagine the impact of optical fiber technology uh, can <coughs> bring yeah. then uh, very recently a group of physicists in Imperial College London uh, they have uh, devised uh, something called a chemical monitoring system and the name of the system is DUVAS differential ultraviolet absorption spectroscopy very good, very good. now this DUVAS has they have it's a very recent um, uh, invention huh? and uh, this DUVAS has the capacity of detecting 20 chemicals air actually they detect airborne particles mm -hmm. and this system has the capacity of detecting 20 chemicals within a few seconds with parts per billion accuracy mm -hmm. which right now no other system can do mm -hmm. and I have forgot to mention another very important uh, site which is biophysics right. biophysics, and biophysics yeah. I mean and the uh, area of biophysics it was generated by Watson when uh, Watson and Crick they discovered uh, by application of X-ray crystallography the DNA double helix structure and you know sir what were who was Crick? Crick was a physicist uh, by training right. so uh, this biofair after this discovery a new discipline is developed in um, which is called today molecular biology where right. physicist chemist and um, bi biologist life life yes it's an together. interdisciplinary field right. people are working there together to understand the basic processes of life right. so there is GPS global positioning system yes GPS. Uh, it's a navigation Navigation based uh, satellite based right. uh, navigation technique and for which accurate timekeeping is very much essential and to keep this accurate timekeeping two theories of physics basic physics are very much essential one is relativity another is quantum physics right. and we all know we all talk about nanotechnology nanotechnology uh, so we are living in an era of miniaturization I mean devices are getting smaller, smaller day by yes. day you know sir who is called the father of nanotechnology it is again Richard Feynman, another world famous theoretical physicist at Caltech. Okay. I mean, he was a Nobel laureate, but being a Nobel laureate is probably an understatement uh, for him. Okay. His contribution is so much great towards physics. And uh, today, uh, if we need to understand the current carrying phenomena and related things uh, through the small scale devices, we must understand uh, the behavior of subatomic particles like electron in those, in those small scale, like nanoscale. And for this, we have to rely on quantum mechanical principle. There is no other way. So we can now impact. There are different specialization which uh, generates from the very basic of physics, like quantum physics, classical physics. There is data science. There is non-linear non -linear dynamics. There is everything. I mean, lots of uh, streams are there. And last, I want to mention there is another specialization can be there, which is spintronics, in which uh, I, I did. You did your yes, PhD. Uh, I did my PhD on that. And uh, you know what, in basic electronics what happens, people usually focus on the property of an electron which is called charge. Right. We all know that electrons have charge. But in spintronics, it is not the charge of electron, it is the spin that carries the information. Okay. And the idea of this spintronics was initiated by the discovery so it's of… it's a part of nuclear physics then? No, no, no. It's a, uh, nuclear is, a, um, uh, is completely oriented uh, in the nucleus, okay. around the nucleus. No, you are talking of the electron, right? Electrons. Uh -huh, but that's the so component of the nu no, nucleus. Uh, no, I mean electrons uh, are outside the nucleus. Okay, okay, okay. And inside nucleus there is neutron and proton. Proton, yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, and uh, when we talk about spin, I mean uh, this idea of manipulating electron spin was first initiated by the discovery of giant magnetoresistance effect or GMR effect by Peter Grunberg and Albert Fatt um, probably in 1987 and they got awarded Nobel Prize in 2007 for that and uh, why GMR is so important what is GMR? GMR is the uh, drastic change in electrical resistance of a multi-layer formed by alternating magnetic and non-magnetic one when an external electric field is applied and these spintronic devices offer several advantages over the conventional electronic devices like uh, um, non-volatility non-volatility means information is retained even after the system is switched off right. second increased integration density 
third decreased electrical power consumption which is very essential today uh, increased data processing which is also very uh, essential for a higher functioning of computers so all these things there are multiple disciplines yes, which and, can stem from and basic so physics so much of physical principles go into yes. making of technologies that we day to day use from gps networking to our mobile phone to yes. our laptops and for health detection any uh, disease detection and all that indeed uh, it's so vast and you are so thorough with that uh, i would like to ask now in this entire gamut of physics that you explained in its uh, in variety in its variegated nature how do you encapsulate this world of physics through the bachelor's and the master's degrees that you have at adamas university in your department so what differentiation you have between the bachelor's and the master's yeah. what time duration you have what focus areas you have how much uh, equipped are you in, in in terms of infrastructure in terms of human resources if you could focus on that uh, yes so very significant question right now so uh, till now i have talked about physics and uh, now uh, let me introduce the programs that in our university we are offering right now we are offering a uh, total four programs uh, one is a bsc honors in physics msc in physics which is a mostly the pure physics and uh, uh, msc tech in medical physics and instrumentation and then phd in msc tech msc tech so i'll talk about it uh, let me uh, let me yeah. come one by one, one, by one so so uh, when a student uh, he or she has already decided that he ha or she wants to pursue physics what are the things that he or she looks forward to i mean number one the curriculum number two the as you say the human resources the faculty strength and number three another important thing for a subject like physics is the lab strength what is the lab infrastructure so uh, let me come the first thing is academic curriculum that we follow we follow here a very updated cbcs approved a curriculum where we pay our attention or rather we emphasize on both foundations of physics and applications of physics on equal importance we give equal importance to both of them because both are necessary unless you know the basics you will never be able to apply the physics or unless you learn something about the application you can't uh, you can't really apply it in the real field so we pay attention to both of them and uh, i can uh, say that we although we have structured our syllabus uh, following cbc but there is something more we have added something extra to make our syllabus um, something unique like for example the first part is uh, that we have embedded here is the summer internship in during summer we send our students uh, to various depending on their inclination we send our students to various research organizations and industry and they can get a real flavor of research work what is the actual research that is happening around us that is happening in different research organization what is the real job profile that you need to have uh, what is the real experience that you need to have uh, to achieve a job in a co corporate sector so that's the thing next uh, thing uh, we have added is compulsory dissertation for all undergraduate and postgraduate programs and uh, this dissertation there is no syllabus this is lab based dissertation yes sir it is uh, yes it is sometimes it is practical based uh, for uh, theoretical research it is computer simulation based right. which is again uh, lab based so and it, there is a bounded syllabus for dissertation yeah, yeah, people organic. can go on it's organic people yes, can people take can up go anything on, take up anything they do can research and i'm proud to say that some of our students they have done so good work in their dissertation that it has been pub their work is published in uh, sci journals Very international good. journals i mean uh, four or five publications are there uh, last year from department of physics so i'm really proud of it and uh, then and another thing is during this dissertation students give presentation where at different times and it benefits them in two fold ways first of all um, uh, they learn the very basics of research that is the uh, primary focus of us and secondly they learn how to present their thoughts how to present their ideas in pres uh, in front of academicians which is very important to be an established physicist i guess right and um, then uh, uh, we also organize very regularly um, several co curricular activities like conferences uh, seminars workshops and even we didn't stop during pandemic we organize various online workshop and webinars even in the time of this uh, lockdown uh, so even in this year in 2020 i want to mention that we had uh, organized a two day national uh, conference ncfmp 2020 in collaboration with IOP Science UK 
and uh, uh, starting from TIF for Mumbai to ICS Kolkata to Bosch Institute, almost eight speakers came. They shared their knowledge, and across the India, uh, various from various institutes and in various states, um, people came, researchers, scholars, and students came. They shared their idea in poster presentation, in talks. And 30 papers, 30 best papers selected by the technical program committee that will be published very soon in IP Science Journal mm, of Physics Conference true. Series. And uh, we are also planning to have, I mean, uh, we could have done it earlier, but during this pandemic, we couldn't do it. We are also planning uh, to have uh, another conference, which is Amphi 2020, that it advances in medical physics and healthcare engineering. Right. It's a very need of the art topic. And uh, in this conference, we have got um, technical collaboration from Springer, from Elsevier. So, uh, I mean, highly reputed international publishing houses. So, um, it is there. So, uh, how is your BSc and MSc, I mean, how do you evolve BSc coverage of the course, the curriculum yes. and MSc, how specialized focus areas yes. and you have come out with an MSc tech as you said just now. Yes. If you could differentiate yes, between sir. these So, stuff. in BSc, we focus on the basics like uh, mechanics, quantum mechanics, electrostatics, optics, people are there. And uh, as per CBCS, in third year, we introduced DSC papers, like discipline specific electives. And uh, as per UGC curriculum, there are all, um, already 14 kind of specialization from which students can choose. And now, uh, one thing I must mention that it is not possible for every college or university to offer at least 14 specialization because you need to have similar strength of faculty members. Either uh, if you don't have faculty members who has their own specialization in different fields, you cannot offer them. So right now I'm proud that Department of Physics has that uh, that strength, and we can offer this kind of specialization. In MSc we have specialization like as I said, high energy physics, condensed matter physics, biomedical instrumentation, and applied electronics. And we are also planning to uh, incorporate nonlinear dynamics if uh, the students uh, wants to take it uh, take it up because data science future is huge. And then MSc Tech. MSc Tech, uh, I want to talk about it uh, separately because MSc Tech in medical physics, it's a completely different program Domain, yes. than the BSc physics or BSc to, uh, definitely even from MSc physics. It is a completely interdisciplinary program right. and it's a concoction of medical science and engineering, engineering and as physics. Well, yeah. Yes, and uh, it's a truly, it's an interdisciplinary uh, stream in two se uh, true sense because we have papers like management, we have papers like microprocessor, we have papers like uh, anatomy and physiology, we have uh, papers like nuclear medicine. So you can understand we need to uh, take help from different other schools, right. from engineering, from uh, school of uh, life science and biotechnology, from school of management. So it is a truly interdisciplinary stream and people who are, uh, and there is a scope I of research. I don't think this particular subject is there in too many uh, universities. No, no, no. Only, only in uh, Jadapur University, okay. there is a PG diploma program. Okay. And in Calcutta University, there is one program where is uh, where the seats are very limited. It is 10, ten seats. Master degree. Master degree. Okay. And uh, now we have well, Across India also, it won't be there. So and but, uh, but right now, sir, <laughs> the job market is very high for this particular subject because, uh, you know, the government of uh, West Bengal, um, Mamta Banerjee, uh, she has announced that for uh, each hospital and each uh, diagnostic center, one medical physicist is compulsory. Okay. So the position is there, the job is there, but the people, people are, are not there. Uh, not there. So it. right now the demand is very high and uh, not only as a radiation safety officer or as a medical physicist, this particular subject has a very um, open forum for research, uh, open area for research. I mean, one of our students, sir, uh, Deboshmita, she got a um, uh, chance in uh, Mendel University, Czech Republic, and she was doing research in the medical physics. So um, this field is open for study. This field is open for research, uh, job. So it's a very vibrant field, I think, right now. And uh, actually, uh, one thing I mentioned that uh, to be a medical physicist or a radiation safety officer, we need to have uh, AERB accreditation. We, and okay. we are right now, we are working on it. And very soon, I hope uh, we will be able to get it. And till then, if the students who um, passes out this uh, program, if he or she does an internship program with any ARB accredited institute, he or she is automatically able to sit for the exams of medical physician and radiation safety officer. Officers. So uh, this is another program which is uh, totally different from MSc physics mm -hmm. and which is a 
particular uh, no. particular object towards uh, being radiation safety officer or medical physicist or other uh, uh, research uh, research area like uh, biomedical engineering so and would you prefer the students coming for a five years learning three years of bsc and two years of masters and masters in any of these specialized areas that you have said. Yes, yes. It so it's ideally wonderful. five. It five is years ideally it is five. And normally, uh, I mean, anyone can go for any competitive exams after graduation is known. But after five years of focused study on physics, what are the career opportunities that youngsters have? Yes, uh, this is another uh, question, a very important question. Uh, well, uh, a student who is usually study who studies physics usually as a passion as a passionate uh, thing uh, I have seen in my experience most students want to pursue academics to the higher level and they go they go for research they go for uh, there uh, there is an option for research there is a option for uh, scientific officers in different like uh, organizations like VCC BARC DRGO ISRO uh, now, if your research profile is too good and you have done a great uh, thing, a research in your life, then the options for becoming faculty member in reputed research organizations and or uh, uh, being a scientist in uh, uh, centers like uh, DRDO and ISTRO is open for you. Then there are obviously academic jobs are there. You can go in this uh, from school to college to university. This is there. And another thing is initially we uh, we have a misconception we have a misconception that uh, it industry is only tech engineers no this is not right it, today it industries prefer in fact uh, we had a, um, a few days back we had a discussion with our director of uh, cdc career development cell and he said that now it industries are preferring students of physics background students right. with mathematics background yeah, yeah, science background uh, yes yes and even, one of uh, even it industry wants content developers also yes uh, yes various other backgrounds yes so, uh, well. so there is option <coughs> um, yeah. there is biomedical research option in companies like siemens and philips and etc g uh, electricals um, uh, GE Healthcare, then uh, there is option for data scientist, data analytics, yeah. then there is option uh, for any electronic R&D sector, any companies. So the job market is high. The job says you just need to learn first the subject very carefully. Very well, huh? Yes, because physics is a subject of passion. Right. If you have the passion, if you study the subject, if you know it uh, from the depth, you will be able to get a job. There what is, is the research profile currently of the department? Uh, what sort of PhDs are being done? What sort of themes are being researched, if you could speak on that? Yes, sir. Um, in our department right now, we have a uh, total uh, 12 faculty members. All of them uh, are PhD. Some of them have experience, postdoctoral research experience from uh, uh, several other research organizations and even from abroad. And uh, uh, we have a very good research profile. As I said, physics is a fundamental subject and it has various uh, multiple disciplines like high energy physics, condensed matter physics, biomedical instrumentation, plasma physics, uh, nonlinear dynamics, um, laser and optical fiber, material science. So we have, we are fortunate that in our department we have people who are specialized in those different areas Very and good. they are pursuing research. <coughs> in fact, sir, you will be happy to know that last year in our department have published total 12 uh, SCI journals, international journals and five Scopus Index conference proceedings. So this is the data for just for last academic session. So yeah, we are doing very good research. Um, one of our faculty member, uh, Dr. Tomal Kumar Mukherjee, he just completed last year his DST project as a Ramanujam fellow. Yeah. It was worth uh, around <coughs> 35 lakhs. Good. Then uh, we have Dr. Mohamita Mukherjee who is uh, currently pursuing uh, various industry projects uh, from various companies and it's worth around 23 lakhs. So people are doing research, people are uh, getting uh, projects, uh, we are publishing our works. So I think uh, in our department, current scenario, the research profile is really vibrant. If I have to ask you, if uh, any youngster who comes to study in Adamus University Department of Physics, whether at BSc level or at MSc level, what three or four things you'll say are standout program, uh, aspects or USPs of the department? One I get, you have 12 faculty members, all of them PhD holders, Excellent and some research. of them are postdoctoral also research yes. holding as well. So that's point one. If you could tell two yes, things. Yes, uh, the number one, as Sir said, excellent experienced faculty fraternity and a good number of faculty profiles. 
number two a very well updated syllabus number three state of the art lab now i'll, I'll talk about the labs later and number four uh, our co-curricular activities yeah. because uh, along with academics along with classroom teaching we also emphasize on this co-curricular activities which develop the students for their future research be it research be it <coughs> job it creates that it creates that mind because creating the mind for physics is very essential and it creates that mind. So these are the four features that I will say stands out our department in advanced. You University. wanted to say something on the infrastructure. Yes, sir. Uh, I want <coughs> to say that uh, our departmental lab is very strong. And it is not my statement, actually, <coughs> sir. In 2017, when UGC team member came here to visit, and right uh, standing <coughs> in the, our physics lab, uh, that uh, UGC person, he said that the standard of this lab is at par with any central university in India or even better than that. So, and from then we have still developed, we have still procured many instruments from then and we have tried to develop our lab as much as possible. So, uh, apart from regular engineering physics, BSc, LLB, BSc physics, MSc physics lab, we have some special kind of labs like thin film vacuum coating unit and the instrument is very costly. We have that lab, we have that facility uh, to coat a thin film to prepare a thin film and then we have ellipsometer, we have laser and fiber optics lab, we have medical physics lab, so various specialized labs are there and not only this instrumental labs, I want to say that people who are interested in uh, theoretical physics, right now computer simulation, you can't do anything uh, without computer simulation. So r apart from this Python and C and Java, this Fortran 90, all these are common features, uh, this is taught everywhere else. But we have specialized softwares like MATLAB, like Mathematica, like Comsol, and we have a very high-end computational facility, which is not common everywhere. So this uh, this lab facility, I think it is state-of-the-art lab, and it is a very good facility for the students. And uh, students who are interested can visit here. Uh, they can visit our virtual lab facility, which is uh, given in our website also. Right. That's another important point, virtual yes. lab. <coughs> This pandemic has shaken the conscience and also the physical world, mental health, everything of the people around the world. How are physicists contributing to mitigating the risk and the crisis of pandemic and ways and means of coming out of it? How are physicists contributing to that? Yes, sir. Uh, physicists are also trying their level best in their own capacity to contribute towards the society in this pandemic scenario. Uh, for example, we know that RT-PCR, reverse transcriptage uh, polymer chain reaction, RT-PCR is uh, now considered to be the golden standard of uh, measuring COVID-19 patients, uh, COVID positive patients. But there are alternate ways. Uh, for example, physicists are trying to show that, uh, medical physicists, uh, they are trying to show that by looking into the chest CT pattern, chest uh, CT scanning report, you can detect uh, COVID-19 without having even RT-PCR. Like there are features like uh, uh, peripheral, multifocal, uh, um, uh, which is called uh, ground glass opacity patterns. Um, I mean, something is uh, there is, uh, like this. There is uh, something called crazy pavings. I mean, with this uh, characteristic features, you can detect whether a patient is COVID positive or not. Uh, I think uh, this detection technique, uh, physicists are helping towards this detection technique. Then uh, I read uh, somewhere that uh, the first protein structure of this COVID-19, the spikes and everything, the first structure which was reported to Protein Data Bank, it was done by a group of physicists of Shanghai. And then uh, there is uh, some other statistical physicists who are uh, taking care of all the data uh, of uh, COVID-19. They are taking, collecting all the data and they are trying to, um, uh, trying to simulate those data with the help of those data and they are trying to predict what will be the temporal and spatial distributions. So all kind of predictions are there, people are publishing papers. So uh, yes, they are all trying. I know that all contributions will not impact at equal level. It is not possible in any case, but people are trying. People are trying from their level best. Great. That's also a, an important role that the physicists are doing today. Uh, Professor Momita, you have actually covered a large number of uh, you know, aspects and it was beyond my expectation. Large number of specialization areas of physics. Uh, and, and, and head of the department is expected to know the fundamentals of every specialization in, the, in that domain should be and can be expert in one. In your case, it's Spintronics. And uh, in your case, you have really 
exhibited a knowledge and spread of knowledge in my, I might say on all domains on all aspects and all specializations of physics I am really happy to note that that entire department has uh, a faculty pool which is completely PhD and many with postdoctoral research as well and you have a virtual lab available in the stu in our website Adamas University website a virtual image of the entire lab that you have got and uh, and the infrastructure that you have is of a national level indeed it is heartening to note that scopus index indexed and higher level journals are carrying articles of our uh, research outcomes of our students also along yes. with along with faculty members this is a fabulous thing to happen i do not think too many universities can claim that students write on yes. aca and scopus index journals uh, on their research findings which they do at dissertation level and the way at and at the ease with which you have explained the differentiation and the vari vari variegated quantum physics plasma physics nuclear physics particle physics high energy physics uh, and many other you know dynamics and the applications in health sector applications in telecommunication applications in various domains of life it's a fabulous thing to really understand the role of physics as a discipline of learning and as an impactful domain in societal life i really uh, also appreciate the amount of co curricular activities or rather research based outcome activities if i can say in the form of seminars conferences webinars and scopus based uh, scopus indexed articles is fabulous to note that really appreciate the good work that is being done in the physics department of the school of basics basic and applied sciences adamas university would look forward to someone coming out with far more as you had a ramanujam fellow maybe a bhatnagar award and maybe sometimes international recognition of the work that you are doing at the highest level of physics thank you very much professor momita de for your in depth discussion on the world of physics and its application thank you everyone thank with you, this sir. we bring this session to an end and we are happy to have presented to you in 50 minutes the world of physics and i hope that you would listen to it and re-listen to it to understand the dynamics better and thanks to professor momita de for facilitating that with a 2% share of the india's gdp the media industry is growing faster than india's gdp and with the world's largest number of films and television channels it is the national informer and entertainer with more than 1000 films a year cinema is our soft power news entertainment brand communication we lead asia in all and a multi skilled multimedia talent is being trained in the arima school of media and communication as india aims for 5 trillion dollar economy the nation needs a large pool of trained economists and commerce graduates focusing on taxation macro and microeconomics etc adama school of economics and commerce is in the mission preparing finance and economics professional to lead this journey with value added modules on the stock market and big data biosciences and technological developments based on biology including entrepreneurship in this sector are on the rise in india We are home to many developments in all forms of biotechnological products with applications in food, nutrition, healthcare, packaging, etc. The unique BTech and BSc programs in Adama School of Biosciences and Biotechnology are path-breaking academic innovation in this sector. Welcome to the world of biotechnology. It is important to be on the right side of the law and even more important to ensure justice for all. The Arama School of Law and Justice firmly believes in this dictum. With moot courts, national and international seminars, debates and initiatives of various type, the law school offers integrated courses with BBA, BCom and BA as well, but different focus areas. With a 24-hour work culture, Arama School of Management prepares professionals for marketing human resources finance supply chain management and pharmaceutical management for the new indian economy targeting 5 trillion dollars annually 
close association with several top corporate houses and intellectual talent in the classroom, the school is proud to have one of the highest placement records in East and the Northeast India. Pharmaceutical technology is on the rise in India in particular and Asia in general. A newer research in medicine is modernizing the sector immensely. We in India have the fastest growing pharma sector in the developing world today. Adama School of Pharmaceutical Technology with its superb and detailed laboratory facilities has one of the best pharma schools in the nation waiting to welcome you. Hello, Rozgar. Kaja Shikriti. Shopne Chakri. Egro Joniki Shudhi Kotter Police from Jatisto. Now, it's a portion of professional training and at a combination. The Amonic College by University Jedi Dutori Garrett. Jamon Adams University. Ekhane Chatrona Shudu Porika Daru Nomorino. Shonga by Dudan to placement even Kormo Jivone Progenio Dokota. The Aji Nijaka Register Kodo Adams University admission test. Adegijo, the Ujol Bosha Tentic.